Hi, my name is Ross Wilson. I'm a veterinarian and chief scientific officer with PLASVAC. Today I want to tell you about the wide range of conditions that we've been receiving feedback on from vets when they've successfully used Caniplas to treat their dogs. Uh, basically, they all revolve around endotoxemia or sepsis, but there are a few added ones. Firstly, I'd like to talk about canine parvovirus infection. This is a very serious illness and uh, Caniplas is ideally suited to treat it. Our dogs are vaccinated with canine 5 way vaccine and a killed E. coli vaccine before every plasma collection. In fact, they are hyper, hyper immune to those diseases. We've had teeters done for distemper, hepatitis and parvovirus and the, the, the amount of protection in our dogs, the potency of the plasma is up to six times the uh, potency that a normal vaccinated dog would have when it leaves a vet clinic. So Caniplas is ideally suited to uh, treat parvovirus. When you think about it, what's, what's going on in parvovirus? You've got extreme damage to the intestinal villi caused by the virus, and you've also got, uh, therefore, you've got bleeding points and loss of protein. At those bleeding points, you've also got uh, endotoxins leaching into the circulation from the intestinal contents. So you've got those four things happening, protein loss, bleeding, infection, endotoxin leakage into the circulation. Caniplas addresses all four, all four of those points. It's got clotting factors in it, it's got antibodies to endotoxin, it's got antibodies to parvovirus, so the damage to the intestinal villi is limited. Something else that some vets do is they occasionally, uh, I hear, they're using a small amount, five to 10 mils of caniplas orally, and this um, has a possible effect of neutralizing parvovirus in the intestine before it gets a chance to colonize the intestinal villi. Survival rates with uh, treating canine parvovirus with caniplas can be expected to raise to about 90%. Commonly, common treatment modalities of saline, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, anti-vomiting agents um, usually deliver survival rates in practice of 70 to 75 percent. The, the other advantage you'll see when you use caniplas to treat canine parvovirus is that the diarrhea stops almost immediately. In fact, the only indication for a repeat treatment with caniplas is if the dog passes diarrhoea more than two hours after the first dose of caniplas. And the rule with caniplas, with all the disease conditions I'm going to discuss today, not only parvovirus, is that you use it early and you use it aggressively. That is the most important thing. Don't wait until the patient gets too ill. Don't, if you're in any doubt at all, if you think it's a condition that will benefit from caniplas treatment, use it early, use it aggressively. Okay, so that's canine parvovirus. Another gastrointestinal condition that's frequently seen is hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, otherwise known as garbage gut syndrome. This occurs when a dog uh, comes across something dead and decaying on its daily walks and eats it and gets an acute hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. These dogs are often bright, alert and responsive, just passing a bloody diarrhea. Now, the same four things are taking place. You're getting uh, damage to the intestinal wall, you are getting infection and bleeding at that site and protein loss, and you're also getting leaking of endotoxins into the circulation. Once again, caniplas, vets are telling us that caniplas is the ideal treatment for this problem as well. Moving further on, we've got acute pancreatitis. And acute pancreatitis is a very, very severe disease and can be very distressing for the patients and the owners alike when the to see these dogs and the extreme pain they're in. So what's happening in acute pancreatitis? You've got a hyper secretion of the pancreatic enzymes that are coming down the pancreatic duct into the intestines and burning the intestinal wall. Um, you've also got release of pancreatic enzymes into the bloodstream. So the dog actually starts to digest itself. At the point of intestinal damage, you're also getting leaking of endotoxins into the circulation, and this also causes endotoxemia. 
The presence of the pancreatic enzymes in the bloodstream causes multiple bleeding points from the capillaries and you're getting consumption of clotting factors. So the two terminal events in pancreatitis are endotoxemia and disseminated intravascular coagulation. And Caniplase is ideally suited to treat both cases. You have clotting factors and you have anti-endotoxin action. Used early, used aggressively, you'll get your best responses to acute pancreatitis. We also have uh, a number of other diseases in the dog which are complicated by endotoxins. You have all your intestinal, well, gut catastrophes, in fact, your gastric dilatation and volvulus, torsion, intersusception, obstructions and twists. All, um, in all of those situations, you have devitalization of the gut wall, uh, great capacity for endotoxins to leach into the circulation, and um, you need something, a specific antitoxin to neutralize those endotoxins, and that is caniplase. Other conditions in which you're going to get endotoxins are pyometrin in the bitches, the uterine infections, which are very, very severe and debilitating. Vets will often stabilize these dogs with a caniplase transfusion before they attempt surgery. Um, caniplase can also be used after surgery if the bitches are taking a long time to recover or even during surgery. Heat stroke is another very, very important case and it's a very tragic thing uh, when a dog gets locked into a hot car for three or four hours. Uh, what is happening here is that dog's uh, body temperature is elevated. This is causing a very fast response by the E. coli and the bowel. They operate at extremely high rates. They, they multiply and there's gut stasis because of the heating. When you've got gut stasis, you're going to get translocation of endotoxins into the circulation. Endotoxemia is the main insult. Um, in heat stroke cases. We had a very satisfactory outcome in a dog in Texas, USA that was uh, locked in a car on a very hot day and all this dog got was caniplase at the correct dose um, and the dog recovered. So moving right along you've also got uh, use in puppies. Uh, it's very very good to use in puppies that are suffering from failure of passive transfer obviously if the, for some reason then they can't suckle from the bitch. You can give this uh, caniplase, you can give it orally, you can inject it subcutaneously or intraperitoneally. I would tend to go with oral in the first 24 hours and then subcutaneous thereafter. When you use it subcutaneously, it takes about 24 hours for the, all the antibodies to get into the circulation. As well as that, you've also got um, fading puppy complex. These puppies tend to die at the seven to 10 day mark. One of the main causes has been shown to be herpes virus infection. It just so happens that on screening, all of our donors have been found to have antibodies to herpes virus, uh, naturally occurring antibodies to herpes virus in them. So fading puppies uh, are very nicely treated by uh, caniplase. And the ideal is obviously, whenever you have one puppy affected by something, is that you treat that one puppy and then you quarantine the rest of the litter from that puppy. If it's something contagious like fading puppy could be or parvovirus or coronavirus, any form of diarrhea, it's, you can also protect, try to protect those other puppies by giving them a subcutaneous shot of caniplase as well. Also, you've got motor vehicle trauma. When, you, when you've got motor vehicle trauma, you've got all the necessary ingredients for DIC and endotoxemia, yet again, you've got multiple bleeding points. You've got gut stasis because of pain. Uh, therefore, you've got potential for leakage of endotoxins into the circulation. Once again, caniplase is a very useful support treatment in those situations. If that goes further to major surgery, such as abdominal surgery or amputations, once again, the extra clotting factors in caniplase will prove uh, beneficial. Um, finally, we've also got uh, all the coagulopathies. Uh, this is where uh, coagulation of the blood is delayed. The principal cause of that, obviously, in veterinary practice is accidental ingestion of rodenticides or rat sac poisoning. Um, these interfere with the ability of the blood to clot. Once again, if you use caniplase early and aggressively, you may save yourself having to hunt around for a blood donor at the small wee hours of the morning. Um, it's not a replacement for blood. If the dog's PCV gets too low, if the dose rate of rat sac is too high, 
um, especially with small puppies who are just inclined to sit down and eat a whole packet. Obviously, you'll still need to use a blood transfusion on them, but if you watch your PCV and it continues to drop despite caniplast therapy, uh, obviously you've got to go to blood. Most times, with a standard sized dog that has eaten some rat sack out of a saucer that was behind a cupboard, um, if you give canny players uh, at the right dose and check the PCV 12 hours later, most times you will find it's about five points higher and you're on the right track. Obviously, you still need your vitamin K. While we're on coagulopathies, canny players would also be uh, pretty useful to use in cases of snake bite that are a bit slow to recover from the antivenom. Coagulopathy is one of the last things to come right. So use, uh, use it there and you, um, you might help to fight uh, a DIC or, or some other endotoxemic result that's coming from the snake bite. And the last coagulopathy I want to talk about is von Willebrand's disease. Uh, your Dobermans and your large breeds of dogs where they have this naturally occurring genetic mutation that results in haemophilia. The, um, the important thing there is a lot of vets tend to use candy players when they're operating on these dogs just for desexing, for example, because they can bleed and bleed and bleed. So what vets are doing is um, giving candy players transfusions while they're doing this surgery. Final treatment application of candy players I'd like to talk about is corneal ulcers. What's happening in corneal ulcers is that you're getting bacteria that are secreting collagenase, which is a very potent protease enzyme that is actually chewing through the surface of the eye. Um, all plasma possesses anti-protease activities that will help to fight this collagenase activities. I'm not saying that plasma is a silver bullet for corneal ulcers, it's just an ad another adjunct that's available to vets to treat acute corneal ulcers, especially um, when an indolent ulcer has been debrided and turned back into an acute corneal ulcer. It's, this antiprotease activity is quite a good adjunct to therapy and it's something that all plasma and blood products, plasma or serum, possess. They fight the collagenase extremely well.